Here we are, season four, episode 30. I think it's 32. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of lost track. Uh, yeah, we did a lot of travel shows, and I, I'm probably gonna hold, hold, hold for the clock. It means it's drink time. This thing chimes every 15 minutes, <laughs> but we do it. No, but we are drinking. Cheers to everybody. Paul, how do you do it? Drink or come up with new shows? All right, I'll answer both. Yeah, let me have, hold up for you. Well, I, I feel like you holding it for me is not a really good idea. Now, I don't know if you paid attention on camera. That had a little left. I bet you it comes back empty. But folks, here we are. It's season four, episode 32. My cocktail is being drunken. Drinking? It's drunk. And, uh... Wait, I'll take the olive. Oh, that's the best part. Mm, that's what you get for playing all day. All right. So, it's always a game when we come up with the cocktails, right? So tonight, I think I'm about to do something that I, I promise you nobody has ever done. And that is this. I, uh, you know, we were always looking for ideas, looking for ideas. And uh, one of the things I always like to see is, is there something special? Is there something special going on today? And with my olive. And it is not National Steal Your Husband's Olive Day, but it is national. Ready for this? Mm, that was good. Name your car day. What? It's a day? It's a day. And I'm going to do, here's what's crazy. I'm going to tie it not only to a cocktail, I'm going to tie it to the Cosmopolitan. <sighs> Blow my mind, Paul. How? What? Just come on. In here, folks. Blue Monkey Quarantina. Only business. Monkey business. Let's go make a cocktail. Yeah. Here we go, folks. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yes, Blue Monkey Quarantini. Oh, that's a, that is an odd sight to see, that's for sure. Moving the cat. Cat butt. Cat butt. Remember that cocktail? That one is not going to make the shell. He's going to try it again. Yeah, he is. All right. Anyway, folks, here we are. Have Season four, again? episode 32. It is National Name Your Car Day. And uh, I didn't know that was a thing either, but apparently I'll give you a little quick history. It's 1990. There is a TV announcer, oh. and we have a cat fight. Oh, which is perfect for... Um, Name your card, eh? No, for Cosmo. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah we bring it at all. Oh, you should put the... Uh, there we go. One, one winner. All right. Regular okay. camera and a dog. Can we come back? Yeah. All right. Anyway, 1990, TV reporter. Uh, he's on TV because he's a TV reporter, and that's where he lives. And he uh, decides uh, to name his car, and he says, yeah, I got an old, I think it was a 54 Buick. And he's like, this thing shakes and rattles, and but it's still rolling. Names the car what? Shakes, rattles, and rolls? Elvis. Okay, I don't know. Anyway. I'm not an Elvis fan. That's fine. Anyway, lo and behold, that's the beginning of National Name Your Car Day. So, last night, uh, in my very preliminary stages of trying to figure out what cocktail to do, at least get a theme, I mentioned it's National Name Your Car Day. And Chloe says, oh, do it for me. And I said, what do you mean? She's like, I, I have a car now. And it is true. She has her own car because she's almost 16 and that's what happens. You get a car, and um, she's like, I just named my car, so talk about that. And I was like, well, I don't know that that's going to fit. But then we talked about it. So here's the funny thing. Chloe got Holly, Shelby's mom's car. This is a license plate mm -hmm. off of Shelby's mom's car. Long Island. She was a Long Island girl. Yeah, and is. Chloe, full respect to the plate and to Holly named her car Carrie which, aka which I just learned last night Carrie Bradshaw aka the car carries her around aka and I'm saying aka it's not really it's just in one more thing but sex in the city sex in the city cosmopolitan boom there it is the ultimate tie if I've ever tied a show together more perfectly I don't remember when 
but we did it tonight. So there it is. That was a good pull around. It, right? I mean, I went from a license plate that says <laughs> Long Island to a car named Carrie to National uh, Name Your Car Day to the Cosmopolitan. I'm not bragging, <laughs> but I am available for hire. Anyway, the Cosmopolitan... Uh, literally, I am for hire. The Cosmopolitan, though, it does have some history. I know everybody thinks Sex in the City, and that's what made it. That is not actually where it came from. Actually, you ready for this? You have to go back to World War II. Now, the Cosmo was made in World War II? No, but the, the precursor of, of the Cosmopolitan, that's where it started. So in, in World War II, that time frame, we, we started off with the, the gimlet. The gimlet. Gimlet. I said gimlet. You did. Gimlet. Jim would love you. Jim. That's a nod to you, Jim. Mm -hmm. But the gimlet was actually vodka, vodka gimlet, with uh, lime juice and simple syrup. And the reason they had to do that, by the way, folks, was because the vodka was just so horrible. But that's where it started. And then fast forward to about 1980, and somebody decided, hey, I can take the gimlet and I can add a little triple sec, and I have a new drink called the Kamikaze, which was very popular in the 80s, right? That was a shooter. It was a cocktail. Oh, no, that was a cocktail. We made it. We did it. I just remember, still remember oh, the shooters. Well, we did. How many? A lot of shots. Only 200 and some. My liver may remember them. They may. So, into the early 80s, somebody decides that they can take the Kamikaze... And they can add a little bit of pinkness to it, a.k.a. Rose's Grenadine, and come up with this almost cosmopolitan. So this drink right now, it's early 80s, San Francisco. And what it is, is it's basically vodka, um, not lime juice, uh, Rose's lime, right? The bottled stuff. Ugh. And then grenadine, Rose's grenadine, ugh, and a little triple sec. You have... The, the the birth of the Cosmopolitan, but it's not until 1987. Ready for this? Toby Ciccini. So Toby Ciccini is working at the Odeon Bar in New York. Not just anywhere in New York. Shall be ready for this? Full circle. Not just New York. He's working in Long Island. But where in Long Island? Huh? The Odeon Bar. That's my whole point. I tried this whole thing. Come on, give me some credit here. I am lots. He decides that he can make this even better. So he wants to make um, this cocktail. He claims, names it the Cosmopolitan, and it's going to be fresh because it's going to use real cranberry juice, real lime juice, not just using, uh, you know, triple sec. We're going, we're stepping it up. We're doing, we're doing Contro. And that's and that's what we've done. So, I'm gonna drink that. for for goodness sakes, let's make the drink. So, uh, first thing, you can put a little bit of ice to to chill the glass, right? Oh, but wait. I will. I'm not there yet. Okay. I I know. I got this. I know. Uh, yeah. All right. So, a little bit of ice. Uh, then you're coming in now. What you should probably use is a citrus vodka, um, uh, lemon, lemon, whatever. Limon. Limon. Citron. I'm using an orange uh, vodka tonight. Any citrus will do. Um, why am I using this one? Because <laughs> it's the only one I have that's citrus. But any citrus will work. Paul, I don't have a citrus vodka. It's okay. Don't panic. Use any vodka you want. You can add it just a of lemon to it if you wanted to it's not necessary but uh it, it's okay so we're coming in here with two ounces of cat uh, out of here no yes sorry down the basement back two ounces of citrus vodka uh so there's uh mine and then one for shelby all right uh oh we we even have the fancy graphic up then we're coming in with uh, three quarters of an ounce of Contro. Paul, I don't have that fancy stuff. What else could I use? You can use just triple sec. That's the that's the very very uh, uh, bottom version of all this. Or bottom, like yeah, well, yeah, basically, yeah, it's a cheap version. Or Grand Marnier, that'll work. Whatever you want to do. There's no rules. Uh, matter of fact, a lot of people think that Sex in the City. It was the rebirth and also the, the death of the Cosmopolitan. 
because everybody started making it again, but they all made it in all these crazy different ways. So I'm kind of giving you the classic 87 version. So Contro, three quarters of an ounce. So we're, we're going to want um, an so ounce I, and a half. I may now appreciate it is what you're telling me. Oh, yeah, you're going to love this one. So we're going ounce and a half. Boom. Uh, then we're coming in with cranberry juice. Now, again, try to use, I'm not squeezing cranberries, so, but uh, ounce and a half. Squeeze cranberry. I don't know how you, I, you know what? I'm going to have to, we haven't done cranberry juice. I think, uh, I think you, you like, cook it down. I, don't I think you do. I I, I agree. I 100% I, I, I believe you. Uh, then we're coming in with lime juice, fresh, three quarters of an ounce. Which is going to be, honestly, it's going to be about a full lime, just so you know. So one, juice of one good juicy lime. Yep, there it is. I'm already like inspired on what I thought it was going to be. Right? Be um, grouchy. Simple syrup, a uh, quarter ounce. Now, if you use cranberry cocktail, you could you could skip this. So we're going to come in with just a half an ounce. For both? Total. Quarter ounce. Quarter ounce, quarter ounce. And then, um, folks, if there was ever a drink that deserved it, Emergency, it's right here. Emergency. Yeah, uh, back to World War II, much like the basis of this drink, but it's got a citrus kick to it. It's going to be perfect. So we'll give it a little sprinkle in there. And we'll put that right there. And um, did we get it all? We got the we got the vodka. We got lime juice, Contro. Or yeah, we did it right. Mm -hmm. No, I know it's so easy. And then you're going to give it a shake. Well, nothing. Ta! I'm so afraid of this cocktail. You're afraid of this? I don't like Cosmos in general. Well, I don't think you've ever had a real Cosmo. I would agree with that, but I'm still a little skeptical. So, so. Uh, by the way, the glasses, just to continue the theme, I don't know if that's going to show up. It but will hold, if you... Don't move? No, nope, hold. There we go. Uh, you get a cheers, but can we can't... It's a little foggy where hold. it says to who. Cheers to Holly. Kinda. All right, hold on. Coming around. These are Holly cocktail glasses. Thank, thanks to Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. And then you're just going to strain this into these beautiful glasses. And it should be a, a lovely shade of pink. So Sex in the City wanted a martini as their cocktail, but they didn't want to do a martini because they thought it was just too masculine. So the Cosmo, they thought, would just really uh, empower women, and that's why the cocktail was chosen. Oh, okay. interesting. Yeah, in case you're wondering. And then we're going to garnish it with uh, a lemon twist. But instead of a lemon, use a lime, the green ones. Um, so let's, first, you're going to get this. Two of those. Hold on. There's one. That's weird. I have to find a better one. This is not my good one. Okay. Huh? Bummer. I know. So anyway, you're going to go with a nice, uh, and like I said, you do it over top uh, because it you'll get all that beautiful effinescence. Yes. Did I say that right? Yeah, you did. All right. So uh, do this. Twist it because it's literally a twist and then you want to kind of right mm -hmm. and then oh that's pretty right how do we do i prefer lime over lemon anyway and then oh it smells delicious right mm -hmm. well, you know i'm not an amateur actually literally i am an amateur but yeah but yet no you're not because you get you have gotten paid <gasps> so you are not well there you go and then do that. You've received payment for making cocktails. I, I have. Folks, there it is. That is your official quarantine cosmopolitan coming to you live from the Blue Monkey Quarantina. Let's give this a, a whirl. It smells delicious. Lime pops. Oh, yeah. 
This Better is going to be better than last week's. One Mountain Dew drink. She turns on me. One Mountain Absolutely Dew drink. Absolutely, I do. Shelby, I'm bringing this around to you. Oh, just in time. Just in time. Up. Every 15 minutes, we have a drink at the Labaster's house. Whoa. All right, hold on. Come up. Wait, I'm going to give you a cheers. Let me see if I can see it. Give that a try. There it is, folks. Look at this. Is that not freaking gorgeous? How is that? Oh, wow. Okay. So if this is what the, they're supposed to taste like in a yeah. bar... Is that not amazing? Mm. So the problem is, is that this can be a very bastard, mm. bastardized drink. Okay. Because people use That's bad cranberry. They don't use fresh lime. They don't use Contra. They don't use a fresh, citrus vodka. If, if ever fresh, was, fresh, fresh. If there was ever a message for fresh ingredients, that doesn't taste anything like the bad, the, I'll say, what you would order in any bar across the country. That is a different cocktail. Now, I will say this. Some bars, though, especially, specifically New York area, they have actually taken the Cosmo off their menu because of all of this, you know, sex in the city. But there are still a few. Matter of fact, our man, um, Toby uh, Ciccini, he is still bartending in Long Island at the Noble Hill. Cobble Hill. Cobble Hill. Still bartending there. Now, I leave you with two statistics. So a lot of people think naming your car is maybe a weird thing, a funny thing. Actually, you shouldn't because every boat in the world has got a name. So why wouldn't we name a car? All of my cars have been named. All of your cars are named. You ready for this stat? Mm -hmm. From 2020, these stats say this. 40% of people name their car. So it's not weird. You ready for this last one? 53% of car names? Female. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Might go back and forth. Well, hey, you're allowed to do that. Yeah. So anyway, folks, it's a everybody, party. here we go. Cheers. Well, oh, you gotta, these are the fancy ones. You got to be careful with the fancy martini glasses, folks. Well, they are because they're named after my mother. They are. Holly, Long Island, Chloe, we tied it all together. Mm. Go in your car. And actually, I, I do. I have to leave you with one last thing. Coming up. Coming up soon, November 19 and 20, 24 hour cocktail telethon. It's happening. Shelby, are you ready? <laughs> exactly. I'm not either, but we will be ready. 8 p.m., November 19th, 75 cocktails from 8 p.m. to 8 p.m. How do we do it? I don't know yet, but it'll happen. There'll be a call in number. You're going to get emails. Go to the blue monkey quarantina.com. Yeah, it's right, not here on your screen. Uh, it is literally not there. But if I could put it somewhere, I'd put it right there. And it would say bluemonkeyquarantina.com or go to coatdrive.org. That is a lot easier of a website. You can go there. You can order your own cocktail. If you're in the area, you can stop by. We'll make it live for you right here on camera. And if you don't, just come by anyway. Anyway, folks, there it is. Go name your car. Have a cocktail. For goodness sakes. We have to finish this before the clock strikes. But next. I will also say, if you have named your car, shoot us a message. What's the name of your car? Oh, you're interacting. I've never... Why? We should be asking these questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Give us a drop. Put it in the text box. Yeah. We want to know. We want to know. Your car. I know your car's name. Yep. Lenora. Yeah. Yep. Chloe's is uh, Carrie. Carrie. I don't really have a name for mine. Mm -hmm. I tried. It didn't take. Max will not name his car. Well, I think he named it Car. And I don't think that counts. Does not. Does not. So anyway, mm. that's all we got. Is that all we got? It is. All right, folks, we'll see you next Sunday. We'll be here. Won't? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll be here. Holy cow, we will be. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Crazy. It's three in a row. All right, folks, we're out. Love you. See you next week. Cheers. <laughs>